it's sunny in Michigan and we don't have winter coats on. It's, that's first. So you know what that means? <laughs> I don't know, you tell me. It's time to get the camper ready to take it out in 2023. Yay! For If you've been following our channel for any length of time, you know, our last video and this video that you're seeing now, there's not a lot of time that went by in between for you. But for <laughs> us, it's been what? What was it? October? October. So it's April now. You do the math. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, in Michigan, it gets really cold in the winter. So it's, it's possible to camp, but it doesn't happen for us as often as no. maybe, you know, we, every year we think, yeah, let's do it. And then we're like, no, it's too cold and snowy. Well, so. yeah, there's that. And there's the fact that uh, we only have a two wheel drive vehicle to pull our camper. So it's right. You know, it's not something I'm going to do with two wheel drive. Most of you are probably in the same boat. So what we're going to do today is we're going to get our camper ready to take out on our first adventure. Yeah, it's time to do some maintenance. Spring, well, we don't have to do any spring cleaning, I suppose. But but do, do a little bit of maintenance, get it ready for the road. And uh, that's the nice thing about tiny camping is that there's not that much really to do. There wasn't that much to do to, to get it ready for the winter, to winterize it. There really isn't much to do. There's a few things we did. Now we're ready to do just a few things for getting ready for our first trip. First thing we're going to do is check the tire pressure. Measuring about 36 pounds right now, 36 PSI. Recommended is between 40 and 45, so we need to put a little air in there. At least once or twice a year you want to grease up your stabilizers um, we've got the manual kind with this it's got a screw that turns it down so we spray on some uh, wd-40 white lithium grease so this one here has been getting a little rattly I use this dry lock lube as a lubricant for our not only our locks but but our hinges on our door. I didn't want because because this is dry. I don't want like a anything that's going to drip and attract dirt and make a mess on the hinges. goes on wet but then it dries and then no more squeaky door. I also use it on door locks, outdoor storage locks, and our hitch lock. Another thing we like to do is check all the caulking around everything, all around all the edges. We use this ProFlex RV caulk and we check for spots that might be peeling or cracking um, or pulling away. We had a spot here last year that that uh, started leaking a little bit so we applied our caulk along here and spread it nice and even and it's, it's a clear type of caulk. It dries clear so you don't really notice it. Another thing to look out for is rust on the frame of the trailer. We, we're getting some right here probably from hanging our chains on there and it it knocks the paint off so what you want to do is sand it up good and spray a little rust-oleum or something on it to protect it
What you doing? <laughs> Taking a nap. <laughs> no, I am looking for a place to jack up the the trailer from back here so that I can grease the the wheels. Okay. Just want to make sure I'm putting it in a good spot. I can't get this dumb thing to work. Grease gun? Yeah, it's brand new, but I can't. Try. I have gone online, I've looked on YouTube, gone to forums, and everybody says that it's probably just like an air pocket or something inside and it's so I've been and they tell how to bleed the air out I've been doing that it's got a bleeder valve and everything and, but it's just not working and I'm getting kind of ticked off right, well what should we do here sledgehammer <laughs> something looks different about this picture what happened Apparently our other one, which was brand new, is defective. Um, a little bit of time has gone by since we tried to make that one work, but Michelle took it up to our local tire shop to see if they could get the gun to work. And they tried, and they couldn't do it. They couldn't make, they couldn't get any grease out of it either. And then she took it next door to the uh, auto parts shop or the auto parts store they couldn't make it work either it was a cheap twenty dollar grease gun yeah they said the spring inside wasn't working the way it was supposed to do to push the grease out what you didn't see on camera was me getting really frustrated with it and blaming myself and and all of that but anyway so while michelle was at the auto parts store she asked if they had any grease guns she was going to buy a new one right then and there and she did they had three models they had a twenty dollar model a $40 model and a $60 model. And wisely, she spent the $60 and got one that works. And what's the other wise thing I did? Um, I don't know. I had them load it up and oh. test it before I ever yeah. left the store. Yeah. So hopefully when I have to reload this one, I'm able to do it. <laughs> we'll find out. So our caper happens to have these easy lube axles. done. Yay! Through the other side. While I have my grease gun out, I go ahead and wipe some extra grease on the hitch. Next, we get to torque the lug nuts, make sure they're all nice and tight the way they're supposed to be. in a star pattern on the other side. Those are all good. No movement. So we're ready to go on our first trip tomorrow? Yes, absolutely. All right, don't tell anybody where we're going. It's oh, a surprise. Watch, I'm going to tell them. I'm going to tell them. No, it's a surprise. So the moral of the story is don't buy a cheap grease gun. It's not worth it. It's not worth the frustration. Right. 
that's the only that's the only moral to that story I can think of. <laughs> Did you want me to share a couple morals, or should I? Is that, are they morals or, or lessons learned? Lessons learned. Okay. <laughs> Feel free. I'll, I'll let you. I'll allow it. First, if you don't know how to do something and you can't seem to figure it out, feel free to ask. Don't don't question your manhood. Don't no. Honestly, <laughs> if you've never done something before, I mean, it's not like people are born with the knowledge. Right. So we, I talked to a couple different people, and they were more than happy to help. So yeah, I was I was busy working uh, the other day. Right. And. But if I, you hadn't been working, would you have wanted to go ask? Nope. <laughs> I don't want so to ask. So that's just, that that's, doesn't, it's not really relevant. <laughs> that's, one of my, that's one of my main failings. Yeah. But anyway, so yeah, Michelle drove up to the tire store and, and then went over to the auto parts place. And right. She got her answers and yes. realized that I'm still her man. Yes, you are. <laughs> yeah, I'm proud of you for not completely giving up and not like killing the keeper saying I, I was we could never go camping again. I was honestly really close to giving it all up. Camping? No, not camping. <laughs> well, also Just, the other thing is if you don't feel comfortable doing things like greasing your axles, yeah. there's plenty of people who can do it for us because right. you, I actually ask them, can you fill our grease gun and make sure that's working or can you just grease the axles? And they said, sure. So yeah. it was um, just a regular auto mechanic. So feel free to ask them, and I don't think they were even going to charge us. Probably not, and that's for something simple like that. So, yeah, just be yeah. willing to ask. Yep. I think we have one more thing that we should do, and you've earned this. What? I think you should get out your hammer. Oh, okay. Show that grease that gun thing, who's, boss. who's boss. Yeah. Made me question my manhood. <laughs> no, don't let anything do that. 